Okay. I come from the horse and buggy age to the electronics age, and I remember the horses and buggies on the farm where I grew up in Connecticut. And uh, my dad got a car, I guess, when they were first in, in existence, and we had a Model T. And mother used to kid him and say, uh, he expects it to stop when he says, whoa. <laughs> 1938 hurricane, if that's any. <laughs> what was that like? I was, I was in it. I was in Providence, Rhode Island. And that's where the, the uh, tidal wave came up the Narragansett Bay and came into the city and flooded all the stores and whatnot. The wind was b blowing so fiercely, I could see people were just thrown to the ground, just thrown. And th there were gusts, and in between gusts I saw a uh, bus going in my direction, and I ran and got into it and the windows from the stores came and whammed against the sides of the bus. And we went on and we came to a cemetery that had loads of trees. And we, as fast as we could count, the trees were up, upheavaled. The roots were facing us just like that. And uh, finally we got to a place and the bus driver called uh, uh, this is as far as I can go, I can go. Uh, run for your lives. <laughs> and we got out, and there was a filling station across the street, and we picked our way through wires and things to that filling station, and we didn't learn till afterward they were live wires. If we touched them, we would have, <laughs> we would have been electrocuted. While well, we got in the filling station, and it was packed with people. You could hardly breathe, it was so full. And the uh, uh, water began rising, and it was up to our ankles and getting toward our knees. And this guy said, uh, I have a car around the corner. I want to try drive toward home. Uh, is there anyone who will go with me? And I said, I would, and he did get, to get out of there. And so we went out between gusts, we got to his car, and uh, uh, we would go down one street, and we'd come to where a tree would be in front of us, with no way by. We'd back back, and take a left turn or a right turn, and we'd go until we were blocked there. And finally, we were blocked in both directions. The trees were down in front of us, trees were in front but behind us, there was no way we could stay in the car. So we decided to run for our destinations. And he went one direction and I went another. And I ran, and between gusts I could go from telephone pole to telephone pole. You had to hold on to something when the gust came, otherwise you'd be knocked down. And I made it to my friend's house. and. Their chimney sailed through the air and landed where I'd been just a second before. The <laughs> whole chimney. And then uh, the hurricane passed over. And uh, we went out to my friend's car to listen to the radio, because you couldn't listen in the house. There wasn't any, any power. And uh, we heard, uh, yes, it was a hurricane. But because there had been no hurricanes in that area for 125 years, nobody believed the barometers. They thought they were just off, even though it had been told by the barometers that it was going to happen. And uh, then we heard that Neville Chamberlain, had, who had been meeting with Hitler in Germany, uh, had arranged with Hitler a treaty for peace in our time. And you know what happened after that. During the hurricane, when you were in the gas station and the bus and, and all that was happening, were you frightened? Were you thinking, I'm going to die? Or I mean, what was in your mind? Uh, I don't know. You don't have time to think about things like that. You just want to go get to terra firma. I was thinking also if they hadn't had hurricanes there, they probably didn't maybe know quite what the extent of it could be. No, nobody knew. Nobody knew. And that was why there was no preparation in the downtown uh, stores. The people 
were safe inside, you know. Then the flood came. This is Sue Scheibel, staff reporter for the Patriot Ledger and Gatehouse Media New England. For more coverage, see the Good Age column in today's newspaper or go to patriotledger.com.